If I could have your attention, we will get this meeting started. Uh, Caitlin, will call the roll, please. Ross? Here. White? Here. Taylor? Here. Robinson? Here. Baxter? Here. Harris? Here. Height? Here. And Witcher? Present. A quorum is present. Thank you very much. Uh, I invite you to rise as uh, Ms. Ross will say the prayer and pledge. Uh, yes, and tonight we have Pastor Broomfield with Bethel AME that's going to lead us in our prayer tonight. Give me 45 minutes by your head. <laughs> Eternal God, we come, we thank you for being a God of grace and mercy. Now, God, pour your blessing upon this council, upon this mayor. God, we pray, oh God, you get in the wisdom of Solomon, but give us the patience of old man Job. Then, God, when our day is done on this day, we hope and pray that we have not wounded anybody. Bless those who are coming, bless those who are leaving. But most of all, God, bless your people. Thank you again for the city of North Little Rock, the place we call home. It is in Jesus' name we pray, and those who love him declare it, it is true by saying amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So moved. Second. Call the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Thank you very much. Let's move right on into the uh, special call real quick. This is an email from Amy Field, City Attorney, sent Friday, May 25th, 2018, regarding special meeting of the North Rock City Council at 6.05 on Tuesday, May 29, 2018. Honorable members of the North Rock City Council, the purpose of this email is to advise you that Mayor Smith has called a special meeting of the North Little Rock City Council at 6.05 p.m. on Tuesday, May 29, 2018, at City Hall Council Chambers, North Rock, Arkansas. The following will be on the agenda. R18108, expressing the willingness of the city of North Rock, Arkansas to utilize state aid street monies for the North Little Rock Lynch Drive and Faulkner Lake Road overlay project. Sponsors, Mayor Smith. Pursuant to section 2-482 of the North Rock Municipal Code, you're entitled to 72 hours electronic notice. All members were notified. Thank you very much. I am prepared to call that legislation, please. Okay. A resolution expressing the willingness of the City of North Rock, Arkansas to utilize state aid street monies for the City of North Rock, Lynch Drive, and Faulkner Lake Road overlay project. Move for adoption. Second. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I've got a, a presentation I want to show to everyone tonight. Um, our communications department has been working on this uh, for quite some time and you know Burns Park is is one of the finest municipal parks in the country and um, uh, we thought that it was time that we showed everybody just what a wonderful place it was we're working on another one I know Todd Larson is working on another one for uh, development but this one was finished first and uh, I was so proud of it and so proud of the job that that Nathan and Jim and, and Robert and, and everybody in that department did that um, I, I just wanted to show off a little bit. So with that, uh, this is about a five minute video on um, what a great park system we have. Mr. B. Burns Park, North Little Rock's big, beautiful backyard. With nearly 2,000 acres of woodlands, athletic fields, and gorgeous riverfront views, Burns Park is Arkansas's largest city park. But it's more than that. Burns Park is a showcase for North Little Rock's exceptional quality of life. Nowhere in America can you find the number of excellent and unique amenities Burns Park offers to our residents here at home and visitors from around the nation. Burns Park takes full advantage of every one of its 1,700 acres providing the public with athletic complexes, pavilions, playgrounds, nature trails, and so much more. Burns Park is home to the most extensive soccer complex in the region. With 17 tree-lined fields nestled in picturesque woodlands, the facility offers a comfortable and inviting comparison to the often barren landscape of most other soccer complexes. The soccer complex plays host to major tournaments where youth teams from all over the nation come to our city bringing their parents and grandparents with them. 
and these families visiting from out of town mostly stay in our hotels and eat in our restaurants. As with many of our amenities in Burns Park, they serve not only as public services, but highly effective economic generators. The same can be said for our exceptional baseball and softball fields. These athletic complexes play an important role in the education of both our young men and women, providing a place to learn teamwork, perseverance, and how to be a good sport. <laughs> An important part of Burns Park is the nearly three miles of protected land along the Arkansas River. This beautiful stretch of shoreline offers inspirational views and is one of the most beloved sections of the Arkansas River Trail, which sees thousands of residents and visitors every year enjoying bicycling, running, and walking. Providing quality recreational trails for our public to enjoy is crucial to attracting new and younger residents and just as important, attracting business to our community. Many people know the park for its athletic fields or the river trail. Others may spend time on the award-winning championship golf course or our first-rate tennis center with 27 outdoor and indoor courts. Thousands of parents every year bring their kids to the rocket slide or the BMX track. Photographers love taking family and engagement photos at our covered bridge. We have horseback riding trails, playgrounds, archery ranges, pavilions, a hospitality house available for group rental, fishing piers, 17 miles of wooded hiking trails, basketball courts, more playgrounds, a disc golf course, a log cabin, more pavilions, a dog park, a skiing lake, even more playgrounds, an RV park, and of course our very own amusement park, Funland perfect for giving the little ones an unforgettable experience. Burns Park plays a special part in the lives of almost every resident of North Little Rock. Many of our amenities have been here for decades, but we never stop improving. Our newest addition to the Burns Park family, and one that we're especially proud of, is the One Heart Playground. Kids with all different abilities can come to our park, and instead of just watching, they now have a place to join in the fun. So. Burns Park is big, and Burns Park has plenty of reasons to come visit. In 2017, there were more than one million estimated visits to Burns Park. On one weekend last summer, more than 30,000 people came to Burns Park. If it were a city, that weekend, Burns Park would have been the 13th largest city in the entire state of Arkansas. We refer to North Little Rock's downtown Argenta as the city's front porch. We're proud of our downtown, but we want more people to get to know Burns Park. North Little Rock's very big backyard. It truly has something for everyone. Job well done, guys, absolutely. That's something to be proud of. And um, I'm, on, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna wear that video out, I promise you. When I'm on the, the civic circuit and going from Sir Thomas to Kiwanis's, uh, we're going to show that off because it's really, you know, a lot of people don't realize just how wonderful um, and, and how large that is out there. So thank you, Jim, for, uh, for leading that effort. I appreciate it. Okay, let's go on into uh, communications. Anybody want to pull the communication? Number five. Number five, okay. Anybody else? How about um, a motion to accept we one, accept two, three, four, and six? One through six, excluding five. How about a second? Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And what's your? Yes. Okay. Communication number five, Betty Williams, signature pages for petition regarding opposition of O1830, reclassifying property located east of Graham Avenue and north of Page Mill Road, special use for topsoil cells. So moved. Second. That's second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Thank you, Betty, for doing that. Okay, we've done the special call. Let's look on to uh, unfinished business. Um, 01830, I'm gonna hold it. And we have some people wanna speak tonight, I'm sorry. Um, 
1830. You're going to hold that again? No, 1830. Yeah. Right okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, Jerome Green. Yes, sir. Are you here to speak against or for this 01830? Okay, you wrote the wrong number down. Uh, that is 01842. Okay, and uh, Reverend Broomfield, you're going to do the same thing? Yes, sir, man. And, um, but Earl and Betty, Pastor Earl, y'all are going to talk about the topsoil issue. Okay, why don't y'all come on up right now and do that, Pastor? Um, first of all, good evening, um, Mayor and other council members that are present today. Um, we are coming back unto you again, um, and we greet you, of course, from Mount Pleasant Baptist Church in North Little Rock, located at 800 Page Mill Road there. Um, and of course, um, we already acknowledge the um, submission of the petition um, that has been, that is before you today. And of course, as pastor of this congregation, um, we want to reiterate some concerns regarding this um, project and topsoil and things like that. Of course, we know priority is our local congregation there um, that sits at Page Mill Road and around the area of Graham and other streets. Um, we have a concern about the access to this property, how it will affect our property, our week-to-week -week attendance, um, and the like. Um, and then a recent, recent development that we didn't get to mention on last time um, is our nearly 60 year old, 60 year tenured pastor emeritus, of course um, the community knows him by the name of Dr. O.C. Jones, longtime pastor of our church. Um, we plan to this July um, move forward in the process of honoring him um, by, by moving to get a, a, a neighboring street there named in his honor. Um, of course he served there again for nearly 60 years um, and we, and again, we don't want to get things interrupted. We don't want to have our weekly attendance interrupted, and we want to make sure that our property is, is contained. And then there are other features that I'm sure that um, Sister Betty will come and reiterate. But as pastor, um, I want to publicly just recognize opposition to this um, and put it on record coming from the leadership of our church um, and representing our church body. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Mayor, may I ask the pastor a question before you yep. back pastor? in the seat? Yeah. Yes. Thank Sorry. you. All right. Has there been any more construction or moving dirt moving activity in the last two, three weeks? No, sir. Not to my knowledge. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I run off. Okay. Thank you very much, Pastor. Um, Mr. President, you want to come up and talk, Jerome? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council. Uh, my name is Jerome Green. I'm president of Shorter College. Uh, I have with me tonight uh, other members of Shorter College Board of Trustees, administration, and uh, representatives of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Uh, uh, for those who do not know, uh, Shorter College is a creature of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, uh, founded in 1886 by the church, uh, and maintained an inseparable relationship. And of course, we uh, at the college have been uh, working very hard to make a positive contribution to the quality of life in North Little Rock. Uh, some of you may have noticed uh, the improvements we've made to the grounds, um, and we thank the city for, the, for your support in the, that project. The 12th Episcopal District of the AME Church has built a building uh, in connection with the Shorter College property that will be a headquarters for the uh, states of Arkansas and Oklahoma and will work with Shorter College to use its facilities uh, to host uh, meetings, uh, multi-state meetings there that we hope will be positive for the uh, city of North Little Rock and this community. Uh, it is our hope that in conjunction with this development, the construction of this building and the continued upbuilding of the campus, uh, that we might be able to, we, we support the development of a sand district along Locust Street uh, in front of the freeway along Locust Street. Uh, there are no residences 
in that area, it's strictly commercial. On one side, you have the freeway. The other side, you have local street. And the businesses are the MAPCO, the empty building that housed, I'm not quite sure what, Fleet Tire, uh, the Episcopal headquarters, uh, and then Shorter College. Uh, we believe that uh, being able to have a modern uh, sand district there would enable the 12th Episcopal District and Shorter College to communicate with uh, the community uh, in an unobtrusive way that would not be disturbing to other people. And Reverend Broomfield, who is the Vice Chairman of the Board of Trustees of Shorter College and one of the leading pastors of the AME Church of uh, Bethel North Little Rock is also here to speak. And I'll uh, invite him to come. And in fact, I'd like to ask the uh, members of the church and of the um, college administration to stand. Uh, presiding Elder Mary Williams, uh, Dr. Keanu Milton, Vice President of Shorter College, uh, Reverend uh, Bill Bowers, who is also a presiding <laughs> elder. Presiding elder means that these people are superintend districts of churches uh, throughout the area. Uh, so uh, what we represent uh, here this evening is a significant portion of the community that we believe would uh, greatly appreciate it uh, if the city uh, supported this effort. First of all, I want to say thank you to the man, to the council, and those who are present. Uh, I'm a firm believer, in, and those who have been around me uh, understand that I've, I push North Little Rock hard uh, uh, wherever I go. And one of my mottos is, and those who have been around North Little Rock for a long time understand that Bethel used to be called Lit Bethel, and Big Bethel was on the other side of the river. And, but it's been my motto since I've been here that if you study history in the church, that the people of Israel had to come across the river to get to the promised land. So I say tonight that I come on behalf of making uh, North Little Rock uh, keep being the promised land. And so many times when we have meetings here, we can, some things we cannot do and we have to carry the meeting to North to Little Rock. And it's my dream and hope and pray that I live long enough to see that all our major meetings, which we got one on the ninth, where we're going to dedicate this uh, building, and we're going to accept the mayor will be there if any way possible, send a representative. Uh, I met with the governor the offer today. I'm going to try to get the governor there. But whatever can happen in Little Rock, I think we can do it just a little bit bigger in North Little Rock, uh, because we're all part of God's children. And I hope and pray that through uh, our efforts in doing what we're doing and your effort to help us do it, that if we can light up from uh, um, that street, that highway, and you do understand Belter's right behind it, you got First Baptist right around the corner, you got Bishop Lindsay, uh, church right uh, over A Street, so we just need some help over there, and if you all can just let, your, let the light so shine that you can see the, our good work, and we'll go by uh, our Father. I want to thank the council for the work they've already done for Shorter. I've been here 10 years, and when I first come here, Shorter was just uh, a, a building on a corner, and because of your help and your de dedication to North Little Rock, Shorter now is a full accredited college, but we cannot survive if we don't continue to grow, and we thank God for you. So whatever you all can do, and I know you do what's right, and I said in my prayer, that I'm finished, but I said in my prayer that this is our home. North Little Rock is our home, and anyone should take care of home first and take care of business. Thank you again for your time. May God bless you, and may God keep smiling on you, and thank you again for this opportunity. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. Mr. President, thank you also. Um, the AMA Church has done wonders in our community, and, and Shorter College is <coughs> something for all of us to be proud of, and, and uh, Jerome, you've done a great job as president. Uh, okay, we got a few more. This is on um, oh, 1843. Um, Mark Heflin. Mark, you want to wait till we get that legislation, okay? And uh, Jimmy Ard. Well, you can't wait, so go ahead if you're ready now. <laughs> he, he's the principal on that. So. Good evening. I have no quarrel as to what he's wanting to do, but I have some thoughts. Chemicals are involved 
from termites and things of this nature of what they're doing. And I do telephone work for some of the termite companies and they're not in a environment like it would be it was there. I would like to see you hold this till we find out what he's going to do with chemicals, if any is going to be there, and how strict are they going to be on uh, him having chemicals on this location. I'd hate to see the city okay something and then someone get injured because of the chemicals that could be involved and he might have stored. Thank you very much. Mayor? Yes. Uh, when we deal with this uh, ordinance uh, a few minutes from now, the applicants are sitting out there and they'll be, be more than glad to answer any questions anybody has. Absolutely. About okay. The issue. Thank you. All right. Let's, uh, <coughs> let's go to uh, 1842. 1842, Council Member Robinson. Call it. An ordinance amending ordinance number 7697, the zoning ordinance, <coughs> to establish the North Locust Street Sign Overlay District, declaring an emergency. Move to suspend the readings. Second. And a motion to suspend all readings on the motion. Cross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. How about a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. Questions, Ms. Ross? Yeah, I just for Pastor Broomfield, who's seen about his light shine, and I, this is just one thing that I want to remind that on the interstate, you know, the distracting, distracted driving and everything, with these signs and everything, and, and one of the things is at night, the brightness on that, so if y'all could possibly make sure that you keep that brightness down to a level that, you know, some of these out on the interstate, I won't mention which city, but it's coming back from Hot Springs, they'll practically blind you. Some of their signs are so bright, and I know that we have a brightness right. level, but we want your light to shine, but just not blind it. I totally understand. Okay. And we'll make sure that we have it dim enough so it won't affect nobody driving because we're also about saving lives. That's right. That's Thank right. you, ma'am. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Ms. I'd Ross? like to add Mr. Taylor's name to the legislation. Without objection, that would be fine. On the motion? Ross? Yes. White? No. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Thank you very much. New business? Uh, I need to call the emergency on this. Please. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Okay. As long as y'all want to ease out, feel free to. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, new business. New business, R1899, Mayor Smith. Please call it. A resolution accepting the donation of certain real property located on Allen Street in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas from Ross Phillips. Move for, <laughs> move for adoption. Second. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. R18100, Mayor Smith. Please call it. A resolution authorizing the city attorney to initiate imminent domain proceedings against certain property located on Division Street in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. How about a motion? Move for adoption. Second. No question. This, this is not a hostile taking by any means. It's uh, that property's been vacant and uh, abandoned for years and years and years and years. And, years. and according to the Democrats this morning, y'all did everything you could to find out who the owner is. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, the original owners all died back 100 years ago. You know, so uh, we just felt like we need to get it underneath our umbrella so that we can take care of it. And we've got a group that I'm going to appoint a commission, uh, and they are going to work with me uh, filing for grants and things like that uh, to, to fix it up, fence it, things like that. So well, this is just the first step. Ms. Ross? I, I just have one comment, and I know that Parks and Recs has been mowing this already, and I just, the expectations right now as far as you know what the city can do at this time and I know that we're going to look at I, I really don't think they have any expectations yeah. uh, okay. if, as long as we keep doing what we're doing and then they'll go out and try to get some grants but you know I mean I'll give it a little bit of attention uh, I, I remember we used to have work days out there um, you know 25 years ago so uh, we just kind of like turned our back on it and it's time for us to look at it oh, I agree too but I, I just you know as hard as we work to get a a small fence at Crestview Park for the, all the years that I know Armin White and the Park Hill group that did that, but you know, that there's other needs too that have been out there for a long time. So I just want, 
it doesn't jump ahead of my other needs. <coughs> Maybe not. Okay. No, I was going to ask, did we tell them that we were holding it because they could still send in an IE file? Yeah. Betty, did y'all understand we're holding that legislation? Okay, yeah. So if y'all want to leave too, you're welcome to. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'll attempt to get a hold of that uh, young man, uh, and I will probably call it, or I'll withdraw it at the next council meeting. But if you want to call my office, uh, I'll tell you what, what's going on. That way you don't have to come if you don't want to. Okay? Okay, Betty. Thank you. Okay. Um, on the motion? On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. R18101, Mayor Smith? Please call it. A resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a lease and generation agreement with Ben E. Keith Company for Ben E. Keith Company to be provided backup generator power by the North Little Rock uh, Electric <laughs> Department. So moved. Second. Any questions? On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. R18102, Mayor Smith? Please call it. A resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into an easement agreement with Benny Keith Company and Pulaski County, Arkansas for property located at I-440 and Highway 70. So moved. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. R18103, Mayor Smith? Please call it. A resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into an agreement of understanding with the Arkansas Department of Transportation relative to the design and construction of the Interstate 30 and Interstate 40 widening and reconstruction project. So moved. Second. The, this is a committee that we put together um, probably six or eight months ago to work with the highway department on what we thought we would like the uh, interstate uh, walls and, and, and underpasses and things like that to look like. Uh, Charlie Foster was the chairman, <coughs> uh, uh, Miss Ross, uh, uh, Missy Smith, and Donna Hardcastle were on that uh, committee and they did a great job of trying to figure out uh, what was the best for the right kind of money. And as y'all remember, uh, we have, I think this is year number two that we put $100,000 back. Is that right, Karen? Year number one? Um, for in anticipation three or four years from now on having to upgrade the lighting underneath that would be attractive. And, and um, so we're really pleased with the, the product that we've given to the highway department. They are very pleased that we got it in a timely manner. So thank you for your service. And um, uh, on the motion. On the motion, Ross. Actually, I want to just want to add one thing. Sure. And one of the things, and I was just asked this the other day, as far as the district signs, you know, basically labeling the neighborhoods. Like when you're going into Dark Hall, it'll have the Dark Hall neighborhood or whatever on the signs on the the underpasses. And so I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood that that's still in the plan. Right. Some people thought that that had been removed, but the, right. the district signs are still included. Correct. Ross. Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. R18104, Mayor Smith? Please call it. A resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an offer and acceptance with Southeast Financial Management, LLC, and to purchase certain real property located at 9906 East Highway 165 in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. How about a motion? So moved. Everybody understand what that is? That's the fire station number 11 out east, and uh, the guys seemed to like it a lot. We were able to uh, negotiate a deal with uh, um, Kay Lynn, and um, we thought this was a fair deal because it also uh, takes us out of that three-year lease. So, question? Uh, on the map, it looked like there were some abandoned vehicles or something down there, or those trailers, or are those still on the property? Well, the property next door, I think, is a concrete uh, But I mean, the property, plant. they went all the way back down to the creek-looking thing in the back, just looking at the pictures. So I, was just I don't know, Chief. Do you know what's out there? I mean, it's... Yeah, we got, behind it is a storage shed with our boat in it. That's not in the picture. That's <laughs> not what it looks like. 
We'll take you out there if you want to go look. <coughs> I'm just, I mean, if you can pull up that. So does this encompass the the uh, existing concrete plant as well? Or is no, this huh? it's just the, the uh, our building, the, the house, the, the uh, garage that we built for the fire station, I mean for the fire uh, truck, and then the shed for the boat. Well, that's not the map that we have yeah, in our packet. Exhibit A shows. All the way down. Yeah, much different than whole. that. That was going to be my question, what is going to be done here if we're only, in terms of, that's where the station is, so and that's where we have our boat. Yeah, that's, that's incorrect. Can you see that, Danny? It, they've shown that whole uh, area, probably two or three acres there, maybe four. I, I haven't seen that legislation, but the agreement is for 1.1 acres that includes the uh, the fire station and the auxiliary buildings, not the vacant land behind it, nor the concrete plant. It needs to be amended then, or do we the map? Do we need to amend the map, or I don't know what we're voting on there. <laughs> well, is there a legal description? Um, no, there's not. No, legal just the offer. No. And you say it's one acre. 1.1, about 1.1 acre. Okay. Uh, Councilor, tell me what you want to do. Well, I mean, we can hold it if we need to and uh, get a better map, um, but I think the legislation is just for the intent to buy it. It is for the intent to buy it, and it does authorize the purchase if you all wanted to <coughs> because the map is not an accurate depiction of the actual property that's the subject of the offer and acceptance, it could be amended to remove Exhibit A so it's not confusing. If somebody looks at this in the city records later on down the line, that, that would be my suggestion. Or you all can wait until next time and, um, and we I believe the, I believe the offer expires. Oh, I believe it does. This week. <laughs> well, we can always get an extension on the offer, but we, we need an accurate legal description on this thing. Well, the actual transaction will have the legal description on it, but it was just the. Well, I, I understand that, but we, but as the council, we don't we don't even know what we're trying to buy. Okay, I, I think or, it's what referred to as the address, but I understand. Well, but a, a, an address, a, a, an address is basically a fictitious name or. A, also known as it's not the legal description, so the address does not identify the properties for 911 purposes and we'll hold emergency it. purposes and that's and so forth. So we don't know what we're buying. We'll hold it. Try to get an extension on it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mayor, I'm getting messages that the sound's not going out. That it's like they said they can barely hear a whisper. So I don't know if that's anything on our end or what. But okay. you hear that, Mr. Billings? No sound. It, it, they can, very Thank you. Very, very. Okay, let's hold it. Let's go to the next one. R18105, Mayor Smith. Please call it. A resolution accepting the low bid of and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a contract with Redstone Construction Group for the 2018 asphalt overlay program. Move for adoption. Thank you. Like How about a hip hip array on this? Questions, comments? Uh, on the motion. Uh, yeah. I do have. Go. I'm sorry, but I, I meant to call these today. It just got busy. Uh, in the project, you know, when they do these overlays and we have the manhole covers, are are the risers included in that? You know, to raise the manhole cover up to the level? Because I mean, when you go down our streets now, you, the manhole covers are sitting lower, and that's where you're hitting a lot of the bumps. Well, the plan is it's, they would grind it down instead of building up the manhole. They'd grind the asphalt down around it. So but, we'll I mean, you're, if they grind it around it, you're still going to hit that. They have the risers that they make that you just insert under it to raise it up to the level. So I didn't know if the risers were included in that or if we can have them included. If not, I, don't but I think that might be Chris walking in right there. I just know I hit a lot of those driving. Did around. you hear that full question? Yeah, about the manhole covers and the, the risers. risers. Yes, that's part of the project. Okay, that's why I just a lot of times if it's wastewater, they'll donate it to us for. Okay, uh, I just want to make sure that that's included. Okay. okay, on the motion. On the motion, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. This will be the largest overlay project in one year that the city of North Rock's ever had. 
there. there so go. I'm really proud proud of that. Okay, go. All right, R18106, Mayor Smith. Please call it. A uh, resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to accept donation of certain real property located in the vicinity of the proposed Argenta Plaza in the city of North Little Rock from the North Little Rock Downtown Development Board. And my and, motion. Um, on this, um, um, well, maybe after there's a motion, um, we need to have an amendment to this because we discovered that there was a small parcel of property that's also owned by the North Rock Public Building Authority that they would like to donate to the city as well. Okay, how about a motion to get it on? So moved. Second. Second. All right, and the amendment? Um, the amendment would be, um, get to the... on um, section one that the mayor and city clerk are hereby authorized to accept donation of any portion of the real property within the boundaries of tracks E, F, and G depicted on the map attached to here is exhibit A that is owned by the board or by the uh, North Little Rock Public Building Authority. Okay, uh, Ms. Ross made that amendment. Second. And seconded on the amendment. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. About a motion to adopt as amended? So moved. Second. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. R18107, Mayor Smith? Please call it. A resolution authorizing the mayor and city <coughs> clerk to execute parking lot easement agreements with First Orion Corp. Move for adoption. I vote on motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. In winter? Yes. What oh. that does, by the way, is uh, the 150 spot parking lot right behind them. It gives them the exclusivity on that parking lot during working hours, Monday through Friday. And um, it gives them 24-7 uh, 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 licensing on 25. So at night and weekends, they've got 25 parking spots. Uh, during the day, Monday through Friday, they've got all of them. And then after work at 5 o'clock, uh, then it'll be open to the public. Okay, next. Okay, 01843, Council Member Height. Please call it. An ordinance granting a special use to allow a termite and pest control business in a C1 zone for certain real property located at 5307 John F. Kennedy Boulevard in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, declaring an emergency. First reading. We'll uh, move to suspend all readings, but there is uh, a couple of questions that we need to discuss. Uh, uh, motion to suspend all readings. Is there a second? Second. On the motion to suspend. Ross. Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Winter? Yes. Okay. Questions? Well, it's, it, the mixing issue has come up, and uh, since the uh, applicant is here, I'll get him to define mixing. And uh, he's also had some discussions, I believe, with the fire marshal. And our fire chief is out there. I'm not sure about the fire marshal, but uh, anyway, the answer, there's just been some questions about okay. mixing of chemicals. And so please identify yourself. And uh, My name is Mark Heflin. I'm with Legacy Termite and Pest Control. And um, what the nature of your question about the mixing, just a lot of our mixing will actually be done on our on site at the on the job site so at the customer's home at a when a pre-treat's being done a termite job's being done pest service what have you uh, will be done on site and won't actually be done on the business property and certainly some will be but yeah and one, one of the council members uh brought up the question of what was you know, mixing would be held to a minimum it says minimal mixing to be done on site what is minimal as little as we can get away with doing. Like I said, we prefer to have, we prefer not to have trucks driving around with chemical in them. Um, is the the onus on us for wanting to do the most of our most of our mixing on the job site? It's it's better from a liability standpoint for us if we can not be traveling uh, with the chemical. It's certainly 
happens occasionally, and it's not a, a major risk, but it's less of a risk than, than not traveling with it. It's my knowledge, too, this was discussed at the Planning Commission meeting along with the, the fire marshal also. Yes, sir, it was. Weighed in on that. It's also there. worth noting that all the chemicals that we use have a signal word of caution. Um, caution, warning, and danger being the three uh, levels of, of signal word. Um, and all our pesticides, termicides are, are caution. Ms. Ross? Yes, ma'am. Ms. White? Um, just, just for my curiosity, so what you drive around in the truck with is not a chemical? Or I, I really don't understand. Well, we dr when we're driving our, our vehicles, um, our preference is to be able to do the mixing of the termiticide on site where we're doing the job. If, if we sold you a termite job and we were showing up at your house at whatever in the morning, our preference is to, our, our main option is to do the mixing on site. So you, but you're still bringing the, the components of that mixture with you? Yes, we will have, certainly, we'll have the, the concentrate, if you will, um, some, a lot in, in powder form and some in liquid form. Uh, it varies pesticide to oh, pesticide. Curious. What's different about that than mixing it? I mean, have it, I, don't, I just don't understand. Well, the two compounds separate are, are different than they're less, put together. Then they're less dangerous if they're separate. Is that what it's, you're saying? Yes, That's what I wanted to hear. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. And so, go ahead. Correct me if I'm wrong, too, but this runs industry-wide where yes, sir. your competition does the same thing. They drive around their trucks and yes, sir. mix on site. So what they're doing is not any different than what the other pest, uh, pest control companies Mr. Are. Taylor, where are you guys uh, where you, where you, uh, currently located? Um, we have a office in Little Rock, Searcy, Arkadelphia, and um, we're wanting to open the one in, in North Little Rock. Oh, so this is this was a totally new? Yes, sir, new okay. office. We, we have current, current customers in North Little Rock, mm -hmm. and, and we want an office over here to be more accessible to them. Ms. Ross? I, I'm just curious if we have, have any of the residents behind this, have they said anything? Because if there's any runoff, it's going to be, you know. From the parking lot, it would be Don't on them. Sean, I don't know if Sean's Sean. said anything. We had not received any phone calls, and there was not any discussion from the uh, the audience at Planning Commission. But we did staff and the fire marshal did have multiple uh, conversations with them on the same concerns you're talking about now. So uh, staff w was more once the fire marshal said everything was okay. Staff became uh, satisfied with what they were doing. But as, as he was explaining, they're, they're not too bad separate, but once they get together, it's, it's more potent, and they're doing all that on the site. Okay. And so I, I, I have one more question while I'm at the floor. And this, there's a maintain a just-in-time inventory model. What, I'm just curious what just-in-time is. Does that mean as little well, as possible? or as, 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 as little as possible. Okay. Obviously, we don't want to have a month supply of, of inventory, uh, just like you know, Walmart made the just-in-time inventory system famous by keeping as, as little on possible so your, our cost is lower and, and we can, there are local suppliers that we can get it from so um, it's not a, not a problem from a business standpoint. Okay, and I have one more question. You know, you're in several different cities. Do you have any regulations on the maximum amount that you can store on site in any of these other cities? No, we do not. There's, there's, no there's not no, a, no regular stipulations. Are they in a residential with residential abutting? The some property? of them are. Okay. Our, our Cantrell office is, well, it's, it's on Cantrell, uh, right by the McDonald's just down from Mississippi, about 200 feet away from um, a daycare, a block away from the Anthony School. Our HAZMAT people have reviewed this, Chief, correct? Mr. Taylor? So uh, you, on your, on your uh, the amount of storage, you, you're only going to be storing the, um, enough to um, for your demand. I mean, you, you guys aren't getting a lot of contracts, which I hope you will, because that means a lot of real estate is selling. Yes, then sir. you'll you'll uh, you'll have more. But if you're not if if you don't have the demand, then you'll you'll store less. Yes, sir. Correct. Yeah.
Where are we, Caitlin? Uh, we need a motion if you'd like to adopt. How about a motion? So move. Second. Second. On the motion. Cross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Thank you, Council. 01844, Mayor Smith? Please call it. An ordinance vacating and abandoning a portion of Gribble Street east of its intersection with Cheryl Street in the city of North Little Rock declaring an emergency. So moved. I've been a motion to suspend all readings. Suspend all readings. And a second? Second. On the motion to suspend all readings. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Let me explain what this is. Um, Needless to say, uh, Mr. Oakley owns all that property down there, and they are getting ready to build a 22,000 square feet office building right on the river. Oh. Uh, house uh, at least 100 uh, people in that office, and uh, this is just that little uh, part of the that holds the world together down there. So uh, I'm excited about it. They're they're growing leaps and bounds, and and uh, you know anything we can do to help them uh, continue to grow is great. Uh, how about a motion to adopt? People motion. So moved. And a second, Ms. Robinson on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. This concludes new business. Thank you very much. We're in public comment. Uh, Larry Westmoreland. Larry Westmoreland. Three minutes, if you will, Larry. allowing us to speak today. I came here uh, February and asked some of the Veterans Land Bank and uh, we've been working uh, very hard, uh, met with the mayor about getting some property for our veterans. Uh, the program is going very well. I'm working with uh, real estate agents. Uh, this is Mr. Clark who's with Caldwell Banker and he himself has several veterans that have been pre-qualified. Veterans Land Bank have several veterans who have been pre-qualified. So we are on the move. We're doing uh, everything that we had said, but we kind of uh, in a process now of uh, kind of li like a little bit lost on the procedure. We have been talking to Mr. Birch, but uh, we're kind of unclear as to the actual procedure that uh, has been adopted by the city council on how the, uh, the property is going to be transferred to the veteran. So uh, we're kind of standstill. Well, if my memory serves me, when we met, that we were going to start small, right. we were going to identify some properties, mm -hmm. and then we were going to come back to the council and go, we've identified this property, and uh, the land bank, you know, y'all want it, want it to build on it. Right. And so I'm just waiting on uh, us to identify the properties. Okay, we do have a couple that we're looking at, uh, but again, we are a little bit unclear as to do the how to do that, but we will work with Mr. Uh, Birch and uh, we'll identify those right. properties and get with him. And Absolutely. We'll, and I, mean, we'll, I, I think we're gonna support you 100% and uh, all we gotta do is find out. Uh, Robert, you got a comment? Uh, part of it, we're kind of getting a little bit more of an updated list of what we have. The list we were working off of was from 2014, because I believe the first one property that you looked at was already been moved from. So um, still working with Sean to get a little bit more of an updated list on that. But we've, I've given him, what was it, about 20 or 30 right. lots that to go look through and, um, and okay. build I, from there. I think we're following the procedure. Okay. I, just keep, okay. keep looking. An excellent job. Yeah, thank you. Right. Ms. Ross? I, I just, I'm, I'm, I have a question, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't get your name, but we have a, have a question. The Veterans Land Bank, now what you do, you is, you find property, someone will donate to you, right. and then you build a house, or you make a loan to the veteran you know, to build a house. The I'm veteran just, will qualify for his own credit. His credit worthiness is the key to making this work. He must have the 
test of credit. So we'll work with him to get his credit bankable. Then he will actually go to the bank, make application, and then the house will be built in his name. So how is that different than just going out and buying one? I mean, as opposed to going to the VA and getting your VA loan, I guess. Well, the difference is that we are reaching some of the veterans who are not very sophisticated in their lending and practices and how to manage. So what we do is credit counseling. So we get him ready and give him the tools that he need to become bankable. So we're a little bit different than most banks because some banks do and some don't. Well, the other, the other deal is, Debbie, is the, uh, the donation of the land goes towards their equity. And also we do a renovation of existing structures, dilapidated homes. What we're trying to do is clear up some of the dilapidated homes and stop some of them being torn down. So once the uh, veteran becomes bankable, then he'll be able to go in and say, hey, I want this home improvement loan. And then he'll be able to uh, have a home. Yeah, we're a very affordable price. We're going to start small. We might do one of these, maybe two, and uh, see how it works. Right. And we've all agreed to that. Then we'll go from there. I guess my question is, when we're talking about a land bank, the city doesn't own any residential properties. Oh, yeah, we do, too. We have a couple. Yeah. 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 There's one in particular on uh, 51st Street that we have a strong interest in. I think it's a... Uh, talked about that house it's uh yeah, it? we have a strong interest in that property yeah that was that house that that we rented out for um correct for five or six men to live in that, yeah i know that but so what anyway I, we're, we're following the process let's we can't get in too big a hurry we don't want to make any mistakes any other comments larry no yeah, whose ward is that in that would three. be three three that would oh. be yeah. okay Okay, Larry, thank you. Just keep working with us. We're going we're gonna to make this thing work. Okay. Anything Larry? we can do to help the <coughs> veterans? I wanted to, Mr. Witcher. I'm trying to get started over here. Uh, I don't know if they are aware that Home Depot has a, a, a veterans aid program that they help build houses or, or donate materials. Uh, but that, yep. it's, Yeah, this, this is not just a local deal. This is kind of a nationwide deal, and this is kind of like the Arkansas branch. Okay, well, but the local, the local stores participate yeah, in that They're not in their program. head, yes, they're aware of that. Okay, so. all right, good. Yeah. Okay, uh, Bobby Taylor. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. My name is Bobby Taylor. May I just want to run something past you. Our Crime Watch last... Uh, Monday is a week ago yesterday. Mm -hmm. We had the house was full. Neither one of our council members showed up. You asked to be invited. I invited you, and you didn't show up. Okay. Well, let me let me stop oh. you right there, Bobby. Huh? Let me stop you right there. Okay. The president of your association mm -hmm. told me not to come, that they weren't prepared for me to be there, and they wanted to have an agenda where they could talk to me, uh, and they weren't prepared for me to come. I right. talked to them that afternoon. She didn't say anything to me about it. Well, you need to call her. I will. Okay. And let me interject something. I was invited as well but uh, the, um, by one of, your, one of the members, but as I told her, I was out of town, and, my, and I have the next meeting on my schedule. So. Uh, although we're invited, a lot of times they're, they're, we have other obligations that, that we can't attend. So, yeah. okay, go ahead, Bobby. Well, I just uh, there was all kind of questions was asked about drainage, uh, water standing, uh, ditches full of uh, trash and stuff, uh, cars in the yard that people were just. Uh, mow grass up to them and been there for a while. These were some of the people that has been there that hadn't been there in a long time. And I told them, I said, you know, y'all may, if city can't bring something to y'all, y'all may have to take it to city hall. And when I went outside, there was two or three groups out there was talking about, and one of them is a man. I had never seen him before. But uh, he said, do you reckon it would, would make any difference? 
I said, y'all have lost communications between the city of North Little Rock and the members out here of this crime watch. I don't know how to solve that, but the uh, only thing I know to do is they either going to have to come to y'all or y'all going to have to go to them. And I said, that's the only thing I know, know to tell you. And this uh, highway department was uh, discussed again there at uh, uh, Protho Junction, uh, Rose City Intersection. It was come up again. And I told Mr. Mormon uh, two months ago, well, it'll be uh, this next, our next crime watch on a Monday that we have our crime watch Tuesday if there ain't some equipment moving in down there, I told him I was going to get back with him. I said, this has been 17, 18 years and been nothing done about it. I, I hate to be that way, but I told him, I said, I'm going to turn everybody loose on you. It's just that simple. You might as well just go ahead and put your phone in a bucket of water because it's going to be smoking. Then people down there wants his phone number and I'll give it to them. So pass it out. And I, I hadn't heard anything about uh, the recycle bins and uh, the garbage cans that I talked to you about in that meeting we had here a while ago, about a month ago. I hadn't seen nothing and hadn't heard nothing. Is that still in progress or working? As far as I know, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. So I need to talk to the, to the president of the crime watch. Yeah. I mean, if they're going to do me that way, I ain't, I'd be honest with you. I'm not going to help them. I, I mean, if they don't say, say something to me, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you not one bit. Call her. Hey, I know you ain't. Okay. She didn't say anything, and I told her. In fact, I called her. Uh, I talked to you on Thursday, I believe it was, that when we had our meeting. I called her Friday, uh, sometime Friday, and told her. And she said, okay. And she's a pretty good coordinator, and she's right now still a coordinator because the vice president moved up to, to president for a, <clears throat> until they reelect them. And she didn't say nothing to me, and I think she's a better person than that. But uh, she dropped the ball. But I apologize to you uh, and to her council members if, if they was fixing to show up and was told not to. But uh, I don't know why all them people was there. You know, she should have said something. I agree. But if she told you, hey, that's fine. And I appreciate you, and I will be back with you. Okay, Bobby. What's, the, what's, you. What, what's the question about the intersection? What intersection? Are you talking about the one there by Shotgun Dan's, Bobby? Is that the one you're talking about? I have an update on that right there. Oh, hold, wait, wait, wait. Is, is that the one? 70 Highway and 165? Yeah, right there. Yeah, right, right there by Shotgun Dan's. Right there by Shotgun Dan's. And Owen. I have an email. Hey, Linda's got an update. I have an email from the highway department through the city engineer's office where the highway department is very aware of that intersection and it is on their list to be completed. Now I can't tell you they're coming out tomorrow, but the email to me states that it is on their list, they are very much aware of it, and that they will take care of it. That's what they told me. I've been working on this for over two years. And they've done other projects. That's what my problem is. They those, do other projects. Those people don't work for us, Bobby. You got a copy of that email, Chris, huh? that Linda's talking about? Mark, someone, uh, yeah. Mark, yes, yeah. Mark has it. Get a, get a copy of that, and we'll get it to Bobby so he can see it. Thank you. Okay. And, and on that note, 391 um, Faulkner Lake Road, <clears throat> 165, 70, 161, those are all state or county highways. We would love to take care of them, but they don't fall under our jurisdiction. So there's nothing, we, we can't do anything to them, we can't do anything to them without going through and getting permission from either the county or the highway department. Nothing. We, we would love to. 391 is a, is a mess right now. I mean, potholes big enough that you can put your whole leg down in them. But it's it's a state highway, so there's no we can do to it. That's highway department right there. Yeah. 
Uh, we, 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 we agree with you, and like I said, we sympathize, and we, we would love to get it done, but it's, it's state highway, state or county highway. Okay, Mr. Ard, you're our, our last opportunity to hear the people tonight. Uh, hope you all know we got a special guest here tonight. The mayor's wife is with us, and I just know he's going to take her out to a good dinner after the meeting, aren't you, sir? I, I'm cooking tonight. You're right. Oh, good. <laughs> Okay, after we had our meeting last time and come Tuesday morning at BJ's, the coffee shop, where they like to talk about what goes on and everywhere and everything, some of the people in the coffee shop that was eating breakfast was concerned that we had a council member that voted against helping the city of North Little Rock change their attitude and their direction and where they do stuff in the electric department. And they was real concerned that everybody voted yes, except one person. So one of them asked me, why did that person vote no? And I looked at them and I said, they're up for re-election and they've got to look good. You've got to understand that sometimes you have to vote against your constituents. I was asked this question when I applied to be an alderman or council member, alderman at the time, if the, count, if the city needs it, and everybody, 80% of the people in my ward wanted me to vote against it, how would I vote? And that was one of the things I felt all the council members should have been in agreement with. Uh, I, by the way, I didn't win the hundred dollar bill because I knew Jimmy Phillips was going to get it, so it was a plus. Y'all have a good evening, Mayor. Don't forget to cook a good meal. I got it. Any council members got anything for the good of the order tonight? I just got one thing to say. One of my constituents asked if the city would give uh, the residents the trash cans, and I told them, you know, no. <laughs> But anyway, they wanted me to present that before you all, you know, that if, they, if the city would give those great big old trash cans to every sanitation, uh, every resident. Let, let me comment on that, if I will, and I know we're running a bit longer than we normally do. Uh, our uh, regional recycling are wanting us to do that. Uh, our contamination uh, on our recycling is a lot higher than Little Rock and Sherwood, and Little Rock and Sherwood furnishes, you know, the trash cans, and so it's identifiable that this is your trash can and this is your recycle bin. However, you know, we tried to do this 20 years ago, and in order to do that, you have to change the kind of trucks you've got. We just, we just bought two brand new trucks, and uh, we've got probably four trucks that are three or four years old, so, it's not just saying, okay, you know, we're gonna spend the money and buy everybody a trash can. We gotta buy all new trucks too. So the regional solid waste is gonna be pushing us in that direction. Uh, I told them that we would look at it and maybe phase it in over a period of years and maybe do maybe just one ward in 2020. And, and then in 2022, when we change trucks, we'll change to the the side loaders, you know, and, and, but that's a decision we're going to have to make and probably we're going to have to make it this year. Um, so we'll be bringing that to you to look at it. Thank you. Okay. That, that reminds me that out in, um, in my ward off of Cary uh, last week or so, uh, one of the residents put a, one of these uh, waste management bagsters that you can buy out at uh, Home Depot or, or uh, Lowe's and whatever. And, started just putting his household waste in it and the city didn't pick it up and the city didn't pick it up. They thought it was his responsibility to do it. Well, as it turns out, the city did agree to pick it up. And I want to commend uh, Harold Ford and his crews that came out last Friday and picked up every morsel of trash that fell out of that Baxter that uh, this gentleman or this or these residents had over, over in the Summerwood edition. And uh, two of the people that called me, called me back to wanted me to commend the sanitation department for their efforts in getting that Baxter, so. Yeah, there's so. all sorts of different plans. We're gonna look at all of them. Uh, I know that in Springdale, um, if you want to uh, uh, 
uh, put your garbage in, you have to go and buy a garbage bag from them, you yes. know, and uh, they don't pick it up. So, uh, and that's how they, you know, if you only put out one bag a week, then you only have to pay a dollar for that bag. If you put out five bags, you got to pay five dollars. So, you know, there's hybrid uh, situations like that. So we're going to be looking at all of them. Ms. Ross? I, just in that situation. In that situation, I thought that we were going to start charging people for things like that. For that Bagster, that was something, you know, that the city, that's, the Bagster's not the city's property. They have I, to come I had, a, I had a long so, discussion. I had a long discussion with Harold about that the other day, and there's no, there's no ordinance, there's no uh, uh, rules or regulations on the books concerning us having to pick that up. What's happening is, is they're buying those Bagsters at Home Depot or Lowe's, and then the, that that store is not explaining to those people that purchasing that bag is only a portion of their expense. That they've got to arrange with either BFI or waste management to come out and pick that bag up. Most of the time, it's used for construction waste. This this particular person it just every, about every six months he'll start putting his household waste in it, and he's wasting his money. He's spending forty-five or fifty bucks for one of those bagsters. But there's no, there's no, we have no regulations. So it's the same guy every time? Yeah. Well, let's go talk to him. Well, I, Harold was, uh, has knocked on his door before and got no response, so. Okay. Uh, give me the address, I'll go knock on his door. All right. Anybody I'll go else? With you. I will, you go with me? I'll go with you. Where you go? All right, we're in. I need to see Chris. All right, Mr. Baxter, Chris. One quick thing on, while we're on sanitation, we're running a day late this week. Just a reminder. Yep. Daylight. And is, Anybody else? Recycle week too. How about a motion? So moved. Second. Second. On the motion. Ross. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Baxter. Yes. Harris. Height. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes for Murray. Too. Chris. If you're a Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why would